You ready? Hit and run. So this is the first time Detectives. we actually get a over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Thick as a white male, name of Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there, and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, name of Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Typical cop, just leaving everybody waiting around. So this is the first time we got a preview of the actual death, or, you know, the crime itself. And, um, pretty much, the guy walked out into the street, car came by, hit him. That's all we know. We have one witness, one Phelps. body. You should take a look at the body. Poor yep, guy I'm gonna try and Landed it on his face and ended up here. Car must have struck him from behind. Shouldn't move the body. No markings. Hang on. Let's get an ID. Lester Patterson. Great pleasure that we acknowledge the receipt of your application 14F and pre approval. This is granted a raise the premium, weekly premium on your life insurance policy from $370 per week to $590 per week. This raise became effective on January 1st, 1947, where our standard veteran care policy entitled you a lump sum payout of $10,000 in the event of your untimely death or permanent incapacitation. This new plan secures your beneficiaries a sum of $16,000. What the fuck? We at California Fire and Life thank you and wish you good health and security for the future. California Fire and White. Patterson has life insurance. Okay. His name is Lester. Is there another pocket? Yep. We can notify next of kin. Okay. We have moved right. Um, rule out foul play because they didn't rob them. Only a couple of bucks. 1947, that's entire day is worth of shit. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Yep. Considering... Car went this way. All the evidence. All the evidence is going to be this way, either way. Yep. Direction of impact, that's where he probably landed. Body traveled a good 20 feet. It's high speed. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Yep. Okay. 
it kind of stopped. Or so the driver managed to break before the impact. Yeah. And then kept going. So came out this way, ran this way, kind of stopped. Bam. He flew, landed here. And slid. In real life there should be smears. Careful where you step in, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. You look at the pattern here. You can see he turned. So Alright. There's another clue somewhere. We just gotta find it. She's all yours, Detective. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Oh. Okay. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. Okay. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Consistent answer, consistent facial expression. Just telling the truth. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three C eight. All right, something to go on. What was the argument? Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices, a man and a woman. That's all. Nope. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and. Things look pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Mm -hmm. Thank Talk you, Mr. Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. Certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna. Mrs. Patterson home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. He's lying. It's obvious. Okay. Why are you lying, Lynch? What are you covering up? Is that the best you've got? You expecting me to confess to being the driver? No. I'd suggest you speak to someone who saw what happened. I'm about done speaking to you. Damn it. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. All right. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. Mm. A witness overheard an argument. 
Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? He knows something, but it could just be that he knows something embarrassing. Good cop. What was it about? Yeah. Who knows? The slightest thing could set those two off. Stalling just makes us more inquisitive, Lynch. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of this, with or without you. He knows something. That guy has a serious attitude problem. Tell you get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a f Okay. Courtney! Come in. Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. We can reveal the root of the problem. Then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Addiction. Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually a benefit to society at large. Mortified. Oh. That's so this is why everybody comes to raise. So the music's off, so there's no more clues. So they might give me some information to help. So there's a way out here into the street, correct? A steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. All right. So, never mind about the music. That music means it's it's a, okay. Let's let's see if we can talk to him about the night. Sorry, pal. That's all I got. Even Come bartenders on. run out of gossip. Anybody I'm at a loss. 
You could use the phone in the back of the bar. Call in what we have on the suspect vehicle. Yep. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, 3 Charles 8. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks, ma'am. Looks like we caught a break on this one. Huh. Okay, let's go back to the car. Come on, come on. Is this, is this it? You can drive. All right, where to? Um, let's go to the Pattinson residence first and then form the wife. Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? How do you know about your husband already? I'm gonna investigate first. I'm not talking to you, bitch. Cause you... Can you tell me oh, what never happened? Never mind. What's to tell? He got hit by a car, and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, I beg I... your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. I don't know about the argument. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk. We were always arguing. So what? How do I, how do I respond here? I don't understand. I don't understand. This is... That's why I'm like, I, I miss the doubt and other bullshit. <sighs> Bad. Admit it. You were baiting him. Pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. 
That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. Oh. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. I mean, that's bullshit. I know that. Maybe I can use a steak knife. You're lying, Lorna. You pushed him in front of the car. I know you that think didn't you happen. Can prove that? I suggest you arrest me now. Yep. I would have loved to push him under a car many a time, but not this time. We're leaving, Lorna. But this doesn't add up. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Oh, I don't want to leave. There's something here. It's gotta be. Anything. Why would I leave? See? Junk. Yeah. Uh, maybe a missing knife block. Something. Oh, she doesn't have a work. If you'd like to play cards, we know this. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? Messages, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks. Well, it's going to be a stab wound. Control on this game is not that good. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. <laughs> Do we know where we're going? Yep. I'm telling you. Guessing doors right now. Oh, there's a body right there. So we can put it. the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again. The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. Yep. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there, and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. <clears throat> the hit and run is still sketchy, though. I mean, it could have just been an accident. You're behind the wheel. Uh, where are we going?
I already mentioned the knife. They're probably gone. He's spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. All that whispering in my ear telling me how we had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, shut up! You had all the bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with it. You think I'm going to fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake! Yep. It's too late, Sabo. Wow. Oh. Going the wrong direction. Sabo, stop or I will shoot. Where the fuck is he? I lose him. Ah, oh, shit. Are we gonna make a bargain or what? Put the weapon down now. I'm gonna tell you right now. Any chance I get an opportunity. You want to back? <laughs> Damn it. Try that again. Don't think the aim was proper. Ugh, come on, can I skip this? You've spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. All that whispering in my ear telling me how we had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up! Banks is covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with think it. I'm gonna fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake! Hello, H. It's too late, Sabo. <laughs> Sabo, stop or I will shoot. This one, I don't care. How long do you think you can hold out? Put your weapons down and your head. <gasps> Say goodnight then. Help me. You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. I wouldn't imagine. So, I give you a hit and run, you bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first-degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Uh. 
nine, five out of eight, vehicle damage, zero, zero. Not, if the car did not kill Lester, but you allow the driver to duck a failure to stop charge. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Oops. <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna stop. Um, before the next one starts. And, uh... Oh, well. <laughs> I didn't really care about that. I wanted to get the murder out. So, I'm gonna pause. Um, obviously... I'm getting better at this. Um, or not. It's hard to tell. Have a good night, guys. I'll be back later, of course.